Section 13.1, special right triangles. Um, when we get to the unit circle, the angles that are defined in the unit circle are based on the angles from the special right triangles, 30, 60, and 45. So there are, there are formulas for both. And in geometry, you already learned these. But now we're going to understand them on a deeper level. So we'll start with the, the 30, 60, 90, and I want to show you where that comes from. So let's draw, let's draw a right triangle, and let's say um, this is going to be your 30, 60, 90, so that'll be 60 degrees down there. And let's say this is um, an unknown side x. Okay, so using um, the reason there's a special relationship is because of this, so that you don't have to memorize it. If you can redo what I'm about to do, this is kind of like the proof of the 30, 60, 90. Um, all you would do is duplicate this on the other side, like this. If I, if I just make it perfectly symmetric and add this, now what kind of, looking at the whole triangle, what kind of a triangle is, is this? It is equilateral, good. Equilateral, equiangular, um, it's, it's totally symmetric. So what would the length of this side be? If that's x, this is, it's as also x, yeah, it's perfectly symmetric. So therefore, if I, if I keep filling in things, I know that it's all symmetric, right? So that's 60 degrees. I just, I just doubled it, you know, I just, and then using, you know, you, what you know about a triangle, what's this whole angle? Yeah, this whole thing is 60, right? And so it's all symmetric. All the, all the angles are the same. They have to add to 180 in a triangle. All the sides are the same. It's a totally, it's, it's an equilateral triangle. So X, X, and what would this side be then? The length of this side? Two, good, 2x. You can see from the geometry in the picture. It's, it's visual. That's 2x. This is where, this is where your formula is going to come from. And now, to get this last side, um, because you see, if I only look at half of it, it is a 30, 60, 90. If I only look at half of it. Um, to get this missing side, this I'll just label it with a, a variable. I'm just going to say h for the height of the triangle. So if I want to find the side h, all it's based on is Pythagorean theorem, nothing else. Because half of it is a right triangle, I'm going to do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I'm going to do h squared plus the side is x squared equals 2x squared. And then if I solve that for h, I will have the formula for a 30, 60, 90. So this is h squared plus x squared equals 4x squared. You know from dealing with exponents that that's how that works. You would subtract x squared from each side. So you get h squared equals 3x squared. OK, all I did was I'm, I'm trying to solve for h. So I want to get h alone. <coughs> so I get rid of x squared by subtracting it from both sides. Then I take the square root. So h <coughs> is the square root of 3. And the square root of x squared is just x. So it's the square root of 3 times x, or otherwise known as, we always write it in this order, x root 3. So there's your, so now we can, now we understand where it comes from. You don't necessarily have to memorize it if you just derive it again. So the, the final formula for a 30, 60, 90, I'll put it right here, is this. This is the only half that we see. It kind of stands up taller here. This is 2x. The relationship is always the hypotenuse is twice the shorter <coughs> leg, and the longer leg is x root 3. There's always that relationship between the side lengths. And therefore, if I take the sine or cosine of 30 degrees or 60 degrees, it's always going to give me the same answer because the, the relationship between the sides is going to be the same. Okay? So. Great, so this is your, um, so we want to label these angles. This is 60 degrees, this is 30 degrees. That's your 30, 60, 90. 
and I'll write below it the name 30, 60, 90. And that's basically so on an, S S an SAT question would give you this, you know, it would give you, um, it say it's a right triangle, it would give you one of the angles and it would give you just um, one side and then you'd be asked to find all the others. Um, if you know it's a 30, 60, 90, if you're given one side, you can find the others quickly. So um, uh, let's do the 45. Now the 45, 45, 90 is even easier to understand. So that's an isosceles right triangle, 45, 45, 90. And it's obvious that these are the same by the symmetry of the angles. Those sides have to be the same. This one's not as obvious, but all you have to do is do Pythagorean theorem. Every so many things come from that in geometry. We spend a whole year studying geometry just so that we know the Pythagorean theorem. <laughs> There's more to know, but um, so I'm going to do a squared leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared, and solve that. So what's what's one x squared plus one x squared? Two x squared. Good. This is algebra review. Um, I'm solving for C, so I take the square root of each side. The square root of this is square root 2. The square root of x squared is x. So there we go, x root 2. We don't, we don't write it in this order. It's much clearer to write it this way, x root 2. So here's, here's your, your formula for the 45, 45, 90. So I'll write it below, 45, 45, 90. And there's your formula for that. And so, um, okay, so now you're aware of where those special right triangles come from. Now let, let's move on to the main objective for the day. And we don't necessarily need these to do this. And it is to what you will be doing a lot of is solving any right triangle. Solve a right triangle. And let me tell you the three things that you will primarily use. Solving a right triangle means find all the missing angles and sides. That's just w what it means. So that, that's an objective. And let me tell you the tools. There are three. And I don't think there's anything else. We'll see when we do the problems, but I don't think there. Your tools are, number one, to do this. And you get to do it in any order you want. You can be kind of creative with it. Is you will use Sokotoa. So... To, uh, to solve the right triangle. You might do it in the forward direction or the inverse direction, it depends. Number two, you will use the Pythagorean theorem sometimes. Sometimes that's the easiest because they're all right triangles, so why not? If you know any two sides, you can find the third side. You don't even need Sokotoa. And the, the last tool, these three go a long way is that the sum of the angles in a triangle, any triangle, the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. So if you know two angles, you, you automatically know the third. So between those tools, we, we should be able to solve any, any right triangle. So let's try, um, we're, gonna do, we're gonna do four examples. Um, so those are your tools, we'll do, for examples, um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put them on the next board here. So I'm gonna move this. Okay. So examples are. They're all gonna be based on um, your triangle looking like this. So solve triangle ABC, and the triangle is gonna be drawn like this, which I have to also bring up another important point, that when you draw these, you're going to notice, and you should follow this convention, that if angle A is there, then side A is opposite, and it's a lowercase letter. I just need to point that out. It might be obvious, but angle C, we typically make the right um, angle. That's capital C for angle C. It's usually the right angle. The opposite side C is usually the hypotenuse. Um, Side B, then, if this is angle B, capital B, then side B is lowercase b, and it's opposite angle B. Okay, so example one, 
is we are going to um, we are going to we, this is what we're given. Angle B is 45 degrees, side C is 5. And feel free to work ahead if you want. That's what's given. And I have to find all the, in the end, I have to find all the angles and all the sides. Any way I want. So I'm going to just, I'm going to do <coughs> one. So if I know angle B is 45, the easiest thing for me to do right away is say that angle A is also 45, right? Because they all add up to 180. So um, this picture is not drawn to scale, but angle A is 180 minus 45. I'm um, sorry, 180 minus 90 minus 45. The sum of the angles is 180. So if I subtract all of the angles that are given, I'm just showing my work here, that that would be 45 degrees. So that's one answer. And now I have all the angles. Um, angle C, of course, is 90, um, but we don't need to say that. So we've got A is 45. Now we need the side lengths, okay? So I know this side is 5, but I can't use Pythagorean theorem because I don't know two sides. But what I can do is use one of my, um, I can use Sokotoa. So if I want to find, let's say, let's say I want to find side A, I'm going to use angle A, and I know that C is 5, so the relationship is, I would use, if I'm going to use angle A, I know it's 45, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so I'm going to say the sine of 45 degrees equals opposite, which is side A, which I do not know, over hypotenuse, which I do know. And whenever you write an equation, you only want one unknown, otherwise you won't be able to solve it. So now I'm going to just solve this for A, and then I'll use whatever I want, Pythagorean theorem or Sokotoa. So to solve this, all I, the easiest way is put it over 1 and cross multiply. So A times 1 is A, and sine 45 times 5, 5 times sine 45, you would do on your calculator. And you would get, <clears throat> be sure you do sine of 45 and hit enter, and then times 5. And you will get approximately, for side A, um, 3.54. And so I actually don't need to show anything for side B because it's, it's um, isosceles and I know it's the same. So in the end, you should have solved for every angle and every side. So let's try, every example is different. So let's try another one. Let's try, if I'm given angle A is, angle A is 32 degrees. I guess we're not going to do anything with inverse yet. That's fine. And side B is 10. Okay, so A is 32. Angle A is 32 degrees, B is 10. So, what should I use? Well, if I know angle A is 32 degrees, I already know B is basically 90 minus 32, which is eight, 58 degrees. So I found that. Um, and then I can say, um, let's say the sine of 32 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse. Would that work? Could I, could I say the sine, can I do that? The sine of 32 is A over C? I, I really doesn't work because I don't know A and I don't know C. So you can really pick a lot of different things, but it has to work, meaning only one unknown is allowed. So what about cosine of 32 degrees? Would that work? Yeah. Okay, so let's say I say cosine of um, A is 32 degrees equals adjacent over hypotenuse. That's the definition. So adjacent is side B, which is 10. Hypotenuse, I don't know, is C. That'll work. That's solvable. So I put it over 1 and I cross multiply. You get C times 
this is going to look a little bit weird, but you get the cosine of 32 degrees times C equals 10. So to find side C, you have to do 10 divided by the cosine of 32 degrees on your calculator, and you will get um, about 11.8 for that side. And now that you know two sides, you can do SOHCAHTOA again, and you, you really have lots of choices for which angle you use and which sides, or you just do Pythagorean. So for the sake of doing it differently, let's say A squared, we don't know A squared, plus B squared, 10 squared equals 10 squared equals C squared, which is 11.8 squared. So we just solve um, A squared equals 11.8 squared minus 10 squared. On our calculator, you would do that, then you would take the square root. So side A is approximately, you should get, make sure you know how to use your calculator correctly, and you should get 6.25. So now I've found all the missing sides um, and angles. You don't need to say what angle C is. We know that's 90. Okay, so that's how you solve a right triangle. And um, finally, for your word problems, we're just going to finish up here. For your for your word problems. Um, I'm going to just make a note, solve word problems is going to be a, a test objective. I'm going to make a note and then I'm going to show you in the book so you don't have to copy down. Um, I'm going to write, we're going to look at example 5 and 6 on page 855 if you, for example of what I'm going to show. Um, but the one thing for your notes is when you're talking about angle of elevation, let's say this is like a building, and this is you, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm not a great artist. Um, this is your angle of elevation. When a problem refers to angle of elevation, it's from the ground up, or from, so from whatever the word problem is, angle of elevation means from the ground up, and uh, it's like from horizontal up, and angle of depression, so this is angle of elevation, and angle of, if this is like a plane, like usually is something in, in the skyline or the air, that's my best plane. Um, so it's angle of depression is from the horizontal down. So that is angle of depression, and students miss these problems just because they don't know where the angle is but it's from horizontal down is angle of depression so here's you on the ground and there's angle of depression um, from the skyline down so let me show you on um, we're going to look at page 855 in the book so you don't need to write it Page 855 is here. Okay, um, in this example, so I, I try, I'm going to try to give you word problems that have pictures. But um, in this example, um, you're, you can see the right triangle here. Um, and you're asked to find um, how wide is the Grand Canyon between uh, Yavapai Point and Wid Forest Point? Okay, so how wide is it between those two points? You're basically finding the hypotenuse of the right triangle, so it's not that bad. You would use the tangent of 76 degrees because that lets you use opposite over adjacent. And then you only have one unknown, and you cross multiply and solve. So it's very fast, even though there's a lot of reading here. The problem is just, it's even e it's even faster than solving for the whole triangle. So that's example five. A um, example six, um, you have a parasailer attached to a boat with a rope that's 300 feet. 
The angle of elevation is 48 degrees. Find the height, and you, it's basically the sine ratio. Sine of 48 <coughs> degrees is opposite over hypotenuse, cross multiply and solve. Very, very easy problem to do. So just because the end of your assignment has word problems, those are the, the best ones, where you get to use it for something real. <coughs>